Welcome to Incredible Idaho. I'm Jack Hemingway. We begin our show tonight with a bit of history. This fragile piece of paper I'm holding here is one of the earliest fish and game licenses issued by the state of Idaho. It dates to April 30th, 1904. It says here that the holder hereof is hereby permitted to pursue, hunt, and fish within the state of Idaho, subject to the limitations and restrictions of the game laws of the state of Idaho. And guess what? All those game laws are listed right here on the back. Well, things have sure changed. An exploding human population in the last century has significantly decreased the amount of wildlife habitat available, and it's complicated fish and game regulations beyond description. Look at these 1993 big game regulations. 59 pages just on deer, elk, bear, and antelope. The goal in this complex new world is to design hunting and fishing regulations to bring the very best opportunities to Idaho sportsmen, and at the same time, to perpetuate healthy and balanced wildlife populations. The key to this is research. The blue shadows of an early winter morning stretch across the snowy southwest Idaho landscape. This is prime wildlife winter range. These gently rolling hills provide the critical food and shelter necessary to support a substantial mule deer population through the cold winter months. But on this peaceful morning, the stillness is shattered by the noisy clatter of a helicopter. The ship skims along the sagebrush, suddenly seeming to pick up speed. It turns sideways and crabs along at a strange angle. The mule deer scatter, and the pilot swings the ship around in pursuit. One animal is singled out by the gunner perched in the open doorway. There's a soft clapping sound, and a deer tumbles head over heels, tangled in a nylon net. The helicopter banks and returns, hovering above the captured animal as a third figure alights from the ship and straddles the downed deer. Rotors spinning and blowing snow, the big ship takes off to continue the hunt. From the moment the crew begins pursuing the animal, to the time it's netted is less than 15 seconds. We're able to catch a deer, put a person on it, put a radio collar on it, and release it unharmed in just a matter of a few minutes. So it's about the least stressful way we can do it. Fish and game biologist Jim Unsworth is heading up a new research project to study mule deer mortality. The information Jim gathers over the next few years will eventually be used to help design hunting regulations. We want to find out the causes of mortality and what season of the year they occur in. Um, we're especially interested in hunting seasons. It's kind of an interesting situation here in southwest Idaho. We have, we hunt deer under several different strategies. In the Owyhees, it's the two-point buck only hunt. Here in Unit 39, it's any buck. And over in Unit 45, it's controlled buck only. So we'd like to see which of those hunting strategies produces the, the highest quality deer herd. 50 deer will be radio collared in each of the three study areas. 15 adult males, 15 adult females, and 20 fawns. This mix will allow biologists to monitor a variety of factors, such as winter mortality, which primarily targets fawns. Those male fawns that do make it through the winter will be two-point bucks by the fall hunting season. She's a little female fawn, so we need to put the collar on her a little bit loose so she can grow into it. And this tubing will stay with her into the summer probably and then deteriorate and come off. One of the advantages of the net gun operation is that no darting drugs are necessary. A blindfold seems to calm the animal enough to allow the scientists to handle it. This fawn barely struggles as biologist Randy Smith claps on a numbered ear tag. I believe so. When, uh, whenever you use a drug on an animal or immobilize them, um, the effects are usually for several hours. Um, that can make them more susceptible to the cold or more susceptible to predators uh, when you do finally release them. This way she's back on her feet, she's got all her senses and she's alert and she's able to take care of herself. Randy removes the blindfold and the young fawn springs away to join the rest of the herd. None the worse for wear. We have certain goals for the kinds of populations we have out on the hill and they include 
nice age structures in all components, the bucks and the does. So we try to manipulate our hunting seasons to produce those populations and at the same time maximize that hunter recreation. The efficiency of the operation is remarkable. An astonishing 37 deer are captured, marked, and released in five hours. Much of the credit goes to an experienced and capable ground crew made up of volunteers like Grant Jemmett. Well, I enjoy the work, uh, getting out. Uh, I am retired and uh, have to have something to do, and I enjoy working with wildlife and any projects that the Fish and Game has got to uh, need some support and some help on. In this operation, it's a pretty labor-intensive process. They come out here in the real cold weather and help us straighten out nets and repack nets, and volunteers are an extremely important part of our program. The helicopter takes off for new territory, and a hushed stillness descends upon the winter landscape. In the snowy folds of the foothills, a healthy mule deer herd resumes grazing, once more at peace in their surroundings. <laughs>